Hello everyone, and welcome to my Bachelor official YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. This week in single man country history, we're tossing it back to Rachel Lindsay's time of the Lone Rangeress. This week in 2017, Rachel took her last three men, Brian Abasolo, Eric Grader, and Peter Cross, to meet her family in Dallas, Texas. Toward the start of the episode, Rachel made sense of that they were meeting her family in episode, early on the grounds that her sister was eight months pregnant at that point and couldn't make a trip to their next area. While showing up in Texas, Rachel says, we're home in Dallas in my darling city with Eric, Brian, and Peter. I'm experiencing passionate feelings for, and I'm energized in light of the fact that I see a future with these men. But at the same time, I'm frightened of not understanding what to do toward the end. Furthermore, Rachel reminded her men, this is the last time you'll get to converse with my family before the finish of all of this. This is truly significant. You'll meet a few individuals from my loved ones. Individually, the folks were placed under a microscope as Rachel investigated what her future would resemble with these expected accomplices. First to meet her family was Peter, and before they headed inside, Peter at long last opened up to Rachel and said he was experiencing passionate feelings for her. When inside, he met the Lindsay group, including Rachel's more seasoned sister Constance, her brother by marriage Alex, her mother Kathy, her uncle Jeff, her auntie Connie, and her cousin Andrea. Rachel's father couldn't meet the men. However, she said she confided in her mother to pose every one of the significant inquiries. Rachel's family saw that Peter was a piece held with his feelings and really didn't wind up requesting Rachel's hand in marriage. He let her mother know that he didn't know whether he would have been prepared to propose toward the finish of the show, however got her consent to date Rachel. Next up was Eric, who shared that he was restless in light of the fact that it had been something like a long time since he'd met a huge other's loved ones. Eric established a decent first connection with Rachel's family. However, her sister Constance got onto a few warnings. Constance stressed that Eric wasn't in total agreement as Rachel when it came to needing to get hitched and didn't have as much serious relationship experience. Eric uncovered that he had never been infatuated and that his previous relationship was just eight months in length. To wrap things up was Brian's date, and prior to going to meet the family, Rachel acquainted him with two of her companions that had marked her up for the lone wolf. Rachel's companions adored Brian and could tell rapidly that they had unmistakable inclinations for one another. Brian let Rachel's companions know that he was infatuated with her and that he was eager to meet her loved ones. He said, Rachel is an astonishing lady and you can see she comes from such an incredible family. I need to be a piece of her family one day, so I desire to establish a decent first connection with them and prevail upon them. Rachel's mother, Kathy, had serious doubts of Brian saying he cherished Rachel, and her sister Constance stressed that Brian was a charmer. Rachel at last got disappointed with the scrutinizing and said that their energy was unique in relation to it was with Peter and Eric. Ultimately, Brian prevailed upon Kathy and said, Mrs. Lindsay, I love your little girl. She has all that I've at any point needed in a future spouse. I realize that I will propose assuming she picks me toward the finish of this and I will be focused on that relationship. I expect for it to transform into a marriage sooner or later at whatever point we both feel prepared. I would adore and value your approval. Kathy answered, I trust her judgment, so you have my approval to take this adoration and expand on that. Brian shows up extremely fair, and I trust Rachel. I'm available to any place life takes her. It's energizing, and yet, it's somewhat startling. As fans know, Rachel and Brian wound up getting connected with toward the finish of her season 
and have been together from that point onward. Look at the video underneath for more on Rachel and Brian's romantic tale. Unhitched male country fans saw Gaby Elnicki search for affection on season 27 of The Lone Ranger. Since her experience on the show, Gaby has been encircled by family, companions, and her kindred season 27 cast individuals. The single man country star as of late took to TikTok to get serious about her ADHD conclusion and what it means for her life. Close by the video, Gaby stated, sharing more about my ADHD process and what the problem means for me as a grown-up. Ideally, this carries attention to the issue and helps other people who additionally have ADHD or figure they may. In the clasp, Gaby focuses on getting analyzed further down the road and what the issue was meaning for her in school. She said, I get a lot of messages getting some information about my ADHD and on the off chance that I can share more about that. I didn't figure out I had ADHD until I was in school. I went to Ole Miss, which is clearly an exceptionally large school. It had extremely enormous auditoriums. I recollect when I was a sophomore in school, taking my most memorable life structures test in the greatest auditorium I'd at any point been in. I, in a real sense, couldn't do the test. Gaby went on, saying, I recall different children getting up and strolling through the columns, and I was unable to center. I left that test, called my mother, and I said, Mother, something is off about me. So my mother took me to Boston, and I finished a great deal of tests to see what was off base. Eventually, the end was that I had ADHD. The single guy country star shared what her finding has meant for her as a grown-up. She said, in my grown-up life, I've understood it's altogether different in females than the ordinary ADHD things you could think. What individuals have close to zero familiarity with is the personal irregulation and how profoundly and strongly you feel feelings. I see a specialist and I likewise see an advisor. Things I've genuinely attempted to zero in on are an exceptionally normal activity plan and my rest plan. Assuming my rest plan is off by any means, my mindset will be totally unique. Gaby added, Frequently I feel overpowered by things that ordinary individuals presumably wouldn't feel overpowered by. Like assuming I need to accomplish something at 12, and it's 10.30, I feel that there's not sufficient opportunity to do anything more, so I get into this loss of motion mode. Something major for me has recently been sorting out what makes me have more serious side effects, and I pause for a minute to be careful, particularly with touchiness. A great deal of times I feel that perhaps somebody's tone was odd towards me, and I get truly hyper-focused on why somebody offered something a specific way, and keep thinking about whether they are furious with me. She said that she will keep sharing every week in expectations that her transparency can help other people with comparable encounters. Look at Gaby's full video above. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.